Okay, so another great technique to use with clay and stamps is to stamp into clay, bake it, and then antique it with paint. So great advantage of using paint instead of ink pads is usually you can get paint in a lot of different formats. You can get a jar, you can get this tube. The tube paints are a little bit thicker, the jar is usually a little bit thinner. Um, these are very old, I mean they last forever. And paints come in a lot of different colors, a lot more colors than ink pads come in, and they're a little bit less expensive than ink pads too. Plus you can mix paints together and you can make any color that you want. I'm not going to do that today, but I am going to show you a couple different ways to antique. So I love using these texture sheets to make stamp textures because they have a very deep and straight impression in them. You get like a really great crisp design. And it's the same technique really that I showed you with the, um, with the other texture. You just put some of that cornstarch on there. Just press in the texture. I roll it a little bit with the roller just to make sure I've got it nice and even. And then you lift it off and you can see that you have this texture. So after it's baked, you might have a couple samples like these. You, you can bake them any size that you want, but I have um, just done these so it would be easy to show you. This one will use this parchment colored acrylic paint. You only want to use acrylic paint to do this. A solvent based paint or an oil paint might end up interacting with the clay over time and then you end up with kind of a big mess on your hands. So what I like to do is, I'll be honest, I usually just use it on my work surface but because we're making a video I'm going to use this little plastic cup. You can see this paint's pretty thick. So I'll put my paintbrush in this water, put a little bit of water in there, just kind of lighten it up a little bit. You want to use a, I love this paintbrush, it has a chiseled edge so you can really get down into a lot of little fine cracks and crevices. I'm just going to kind of rub that paint in there. And you can see I'm kind of going for at a couple different angles so that I can get the paint down in the grooves. I mean, you don't really care that much about what's on top because we're going to wipe that off. That's what the antiquing process is, that you will wipe off the paint on the top and the paint will remain in the grooves. So this clay I'm using is the souffle. And one thing that's very interesting about it is that the surface, because it's matte and it has a little tiny bit of texture to it, will also absorb the paint. So you have the opportunity to change the color of the clay a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm just wiping off the surface. Oh, did I mention this is messy? It can be messy, which is fun. Isn't that one of the greatest things about any kind of craft is like the opportunity to make a mess for a good reason? So you can see like I'm just wiping it off and if I wanted to I could leave it like that. Uh, the acrylic paint dries really quickly. If you give it like a minute it will be almost dry. And then if you want to really have it be black on the top, you just uh, dip a little corner of paper towel in water. Just get it damp. You don't want it to be wet, wet. And then you just wipe it off a little bit more. And you can see how you can just keep wiping the paint off. And if you don't like it, if it's not coming out the way you want, you can really just stick it in some warm water with a little bit of soap. And you can wash all that paint off and start over again. So you never have to worry about... I'm sorry, you never have to worry about uh, ruining it and having to start all over again. You can always just wash the paint off and start again. A lot of people will uh, rebake a piece after it's been painted and that helps the acrylic paint really adhere. But when you're pushing the paint down into a texture, it doesn't really matter because it's not really going to get any wear there. So you, as you can see, you can keep doing this over and over again too. You can do a light coat and then you can um, you know, put a little bit more on if you want it to be heavier. It's a very easy technique to do. So now I want to show you again on this piece. Now this color is Souffle Mai Tai. What a beautiful color. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you how 
you can change the color a little bit. As you can see, like these colors don't quite look the same, and that's because I left a little bit of this uh, yellow oxide paint. You can see, like, you really need very, very small amount of paint. I'm going to clean off my paintbrush a little bit. So the way you, can, you clean off a paintbrush, just get it wet and just stroke it over and over again on the towel. And I'll clean most of that paint off of there if you're using different colors of paint at the same time. I'm going to get my paintbrush a little bit wet. Put it in there. And just paint in here. See, one thing I love about these texture sheets is they have such a deep impression. You can really get that paint down in there, get as much in there as you want. And then with this chisel brush, you kind of want to tap it, and that kind of gets it down into some of these little dots that are here. I usually put my paintbrush right back in the water after I'm done using it. You don't want that paint to dry on your brush. Once again, I'm just wiping off some of that excess clay. Sometimes if you see like there are a couple places that you haven't got it, you can just sort of use the paper towel to push the paint down in there. Wipe it off. You can see there's quite a bit of paint in there. And then you can use little dot of your paper towel. Wipe off some of that paint off the surface. You can get any effect that you want to get. So I would probably leave it like that, let it dry a little bit, wipe it a little more, put a little more paint on. You can be as fussy with it or as easy with it as you want. And one thing that's great about using paint too is if you had a design that was a lot of different colors and then you put in one color of paint throughout, that would kind of help unify the design because when you use the same color throughout a bunch of different colors, then the design all comes together a little bit better. And that's how to use paint with polymer clay.